Okay, so by now you should have your tool belt installed and if you type out git, you should see some git status. This doesn't matter if you're on Windows um, or if you're on Mac. This is all the just kind of git help stuff. There's all types of things that you can do with git, so I definitely recommend learning more about it if you plan on working with multiple people or Heroku. Um, now, to work with Heroku, you don't have to know a ton of git, but you do. You should know some. Um, so I'm just going to do some basic things here and hopefully explain enough to you that you'll be able to launch your project on Git. Uh, if you have any questions, um, stackoverflow.com is a great resource for that. Uh, also on Coding for Entrepreneurs, we have um, some projects specifically for Git and Heroku. So if you go on here, you'll see in core, we have Heroku and Django. Django and then Git Basics. So these two things, as well as Amazon Web Services, you can use those three together to make your project just a little bit more robust than what I'm about to show you. Um, but what I will show you is actually gonna get you up to the point where you can actually use your own Heroku app and within uh, your project. So what you wanna do is do Heroku login, and you're gonna make sure Again, this requires that you have the tool belt installed. You might have to restart terminal or command prompt depending on where you are. Uh, but once you have this, you're gonna log in to your account. So coding for entrepreneurs at gmail.com, that's my account. And then you type in your password. As it says, typing will be hidden. Uh, log in and authenticate. Okay, great. So I actually have a authentication fine. So if I do Heroku, I can type that out and it's gonna give me all of these different um, you know, topics, and then also we can do, what we're actually gonna do is Heroku create. And this is gonna create a brand new app for us within our own app, right? So it says Git Remote Heroku added. So I'm gonna do Git Remote V. And I see for me, I have two actually. So I have Heroku and Origin. So a push and fetch, notice push and fetch. So you can push things and you can also pull them. Fetch is like pulling or grabbing. Uh, there is a term called pull in Git too, so don't get that confused, but just in general sense, pushing it to the server and then fetching it from the server. So getting it from them. Um, so I have Heroku and Origin. So mine's going to GitHub and Heroku. Yours will only be going to Heroku most likely. Uh, so we have that. And now what you're gonna wanna do is we're gonna do git add and then dot. So this is gonna add everything. You can also do git add dash dash all. That will add everything that's in your document or in your repository or actually within the folders of your repository, I should say. So if I do git status, this would tell me what actually needs to be committed still. So what needs to be added to then be added to the server. Um, so let's actually do something different so we can actually see what I mean. Now, if I go to GitHub's Python git ignore, if I search this and go to GitHub Python git ignore, um, I'm gonna go to raw, and I'm actually gonna copy this whole thing. So copy this all the way to the bottom, and inside of your project, mine already has one because I've been using GitHub, but if I go to new file, I'm just gonna save it, and then I do dot git ignore, and it's gonna say that dot are reserved for the system, you wanna use dot, and then replace it, or I'm gonna replace it, you just probably won't. So I'm gonna paste this in here. So now this is just gonna ignore a bunch of Python files that we just don't need to send anywhere. We don't need to send it to our repository and we don't. We definitely don't need to send it to Heroku. Um, so that is one thing that like PYC, a lot of the PYC files that are created, we don't need to send those to Heroku. So we'll save this and now I'll do git status. And this is now tracking all the changes that I made. Now yours won't see modified because you don't have um, anything in your repository yet, but mine is modified because I actually did change it. And then I also see this DS store and then I have DB SQLite 3. Well, guess what? I don't want to actually track these. I don't want DS store and I don't want DB SQLite 3. So I'm gonna copy these and go into my git ignore, paste them in, take out the spaces, so this is now gonna be ignored by Git. So if I do git status, it's no longer there, right? Git status again, so we don't see it above it. It's no longer there. Now it's just saying that modified was git ignore. Uh, for yours, you might see a bunch of files. You probably will see a bunch of files on there. 
uh, because yours is nothing has been committed for yours. You should see joins, LWC, static, templates. You should see all of that with probably a trailing slash on it. Uh, so like if I made a new folder, oops, not a new file, but a new folder, I'll just call it delete this. Uh, this folder's there. If I do git status, it's there's nothing there. So let's actually create something in there. And I'll just say hi and hi.txt. So now I have a file in there. If I do git status now, it shows, hey, look, there's a new folder called delete this. Uh, cool. So that is some basic stuff on git. It will track all of the changes you make, no matter how small. So if I go into settings and go to base, press enter a couple times, get status, it shows that I made those changes, right? So it tracks everything. And then if I undo it, it does that. So it's tracking what's currently committed and what's not. So committed means that it's, it's like ready to be sent somewhere or it's actually being tracked and it's, and it's finished being tracked. Um, I go into more detail on this on codingforentrepreneurs.com, so check that out if you are really confused about what's going on. But basically, the point is, is git status will show you what has been changed. Git add will add those changes to be committed. And then we do git commit, and we write a message. In this case, it will be your initial commit, right? So you can write initial commit, so your first commit. I'm going to say modified dot git ignore file okay so that is my git ignore if i do git log i'll see the log of all of my git so i just press down to see all of the changes that i've made over time and you can see the different commit that they are okay so i'm going to press q to quit and since i have heroku now by doing git remote v see Heroku's there. I can now push to Heroku. So git push Heroku, and then you just say master. Master is the master stage or match master uh, repository. So that's what you're actually going to be sending. It's your master branch. Uh, so you're actually sending the main code. There's a lot more to it, but just know that when you want to actually make a change, you do master. So I press enter to send it to master. So it's now actually uploading it into the server everything that's going on there is now going on to heroku it's actually doing it right so this is something you will see too um, and what it's saying is push rejected no cedar support app detected um, so that might mean that i actually didn't set up my app correctly so let's actually take a look um, we have our proc file here that's set up right um, but there's a few other things that i need to do First off, I need to do pip freeze into requirements.txt. That's one that I absolutely need to do. And all this is doing is copying what's in pip freeze to requirements.txt. So pip freeze is all of this. But there's more stuff that um, it actually requires on Heroku. And we also need to set up our production.py file. Um, so let's go ahead and look at Heroku and Django stuff. So Django and Heroku, if I just type that out. It's gonna give me this getting started with Django. So I'm actually gonna scroll down. Uh, we've already made it. We've already done a virtual environment. We've already activated the virtual environment. So the Django tool belt might be something we need. But if I scroll down, these are the requirements that their project requires. So um, let's actually compare that to ours and open up requirements.txt. So I have Django, I have South and WSGIRF. So all I need really are these. So I'm going to go ahead and copy those, paste that in here. All right. And now if we scroll down, we see Django settings file. So this is all the settings that it needs uh, for our live settings. So these are going to go into our production app. So let's actually go ahead and go into production and just paste these in for now. Okay. And then I'm going to scroll down WSGI that actually has changed now. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and go into our WSGI file paste that in here. There will be other changes that we'll need to do, but realistically, all we need to do is get rid of that. And then I'm going to do from, actually, I'll just do try. And then all I'm going to do is try and save it as that and then accept pass. So basically, if DJ static and C Ling or Kling 
exists, then it will work. Otherwise it won't and application will override our default application. Okay, so now in our production file, we're gonna need to do some changes in there. It's talking about Git stuff. We have that fine and we've already ran through some of that stuff. Okay, cool. So um, first off, I wanna set up, make sure my settings files are working just fine. So let's actually go ahead and look at our production. First off, this is gonna run an error because there's nothing called databases in where we're at. So we need to actually go from django.conf import settings and we'll say databases equals to settings.databases. That way that this should work then. Um, and also we wanna say um, debug equals to false and so debug equals to false and template debug equals to, I'm gonna leave it as true for now, but we will eventually put it to false. Okay, so now we have these, this part is taken care of okay. Allowed hosts, okay, and then all the static root stuff, we actually can use what we've got already. But I do, I might wanna import OS, but actually I don't think that I'll need to. So I'll just do import OS just in case, put that at the very top. All right, so I think this is all we'll need. Let's actually close out the server and I'm gonna run it. I wanna see if my local server is still working fine. So going into launch with code, refresh, looks like it is. Yeah, so it looks like my local stuff is working okay. Close out that server, get status to see if they're, what the changes are. Notice I modified these two files and then I added requirements.txt. So what I'll do now is git add and you'll do dot and then git commit message add requirements and then git push Heroku master, press enter. Now it's initializing, it's doing pretty much the same thing again um, and it's gonna go through this process a lot. So every time you make a change, this is all you have to do is git commit add and then git commit m and then add requirements and then git push uh, your master. And now it's seeing that the Python app is detected um, and that has to do with uh, the few settings that we set up. Um, and the main one being the WSGI, the fact that I put this here allows the um, our Heroku app to actually read everything. And notice it's actually installing a bunch of stuff. So it's going through, it's downloading and installing all of the different things that are in our requirements.txt. And it looks like it's it copied 73 static files to static to static root. Hopefully this is actually working okay. Um, it's successfully installed everything it looks like. So I'm gonna go back into our getting started with Django, scroll down a little bit and we wanna scale up our web server once it's done. So Heroku PS scale web equals to one. So the scale of one, uh, the one dyno, that's what that is, uh, is free. And that's something that's really nice about it. It's not super fast, but it's actually very generous. So if you need to scale up your dynos, you can check out Heroku um, based on the demand that you have and, and all that. Okay, so now, now that it's there, uh, let's actually go ahead and see the Heroku PS. Let's see what it is. So this will tell you that our our actual project is up and when it was last up, which is 34 seconds ago. So now we can just open it up with Heroku open. And this one is called Ancient Castle, right? So that's the name of the app. And notice everything loaded in, all my static files are good. Um, and if I enter my email address and hit join, ah, no such table joins join. What happened here? Well, we still have to do Python manage.py sync db. We still have to do that stuff. Um, so let's go ahead and do it. And I'll, it's really easy. We just do Heroku run Python manage.py sync db. Press enter. And that is how you run all the Python commands that you'll need. Um, so it's now saying you need a super user, which you do, because this is a, it's no longer um, on your local server, it's now on your production server. So we say yes, and set up a user. So I'll just say jmitchell3, 
like my normal user, and then I'm gonna use my email address. And then I'm gonna use a, a complicated password, right? So you make sure you can remember this password or write it down or something like that. That's a complicated password. And notice it says not synced, so joins is still not synced. Ah, it says use manage to migrate to migrate these. Okay, well, let's try that. So Python Heroku, Heroku run. I'm gonna show you another way is if we do run bash, it allows us to go into the command line interface for our Heroku. So you see this dollar sign here. So now I can just do python manage.py, migrate, press enter. Ah, no such table migration history. So let's see why, python manage.py, run server. Oops, not run server, sync db. And it looks like it's creating it again. So we might have a little bit of an issue. So I'm actually going to exit out, cancel that, I'll list everything out. And I wanna see if my local settings file came through and I think it did. So if I go into CD settings, ah, I see the local.py. I do not want local.py and I also do not want um, my database file at all. So let's, let's actually get rid of local.py. Um, so inside of our git ignore, we need to get rid of local.py. So L, so I'm gonna do LWC slash settings slash local.py, save it. I close out of this just by exit. Okay, now we got git status. Okay, so uh, git ignore was modified. So we'll do git add, git commit, update settings folder git push Heroku master. Uh, but what you should see is uh, the problem with this is it's not actually gonna track the fact that it should remove that old local.py file. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll go into our git and we'll do git rm, so git remove, and it's lwc settings local.py. So now I removed it. So if I do git commit, message removed local.py git push heroku master python app detected i'll let this finish okay now it's finished let's do heroku run bash just want to make sure that it's actually gone from my server Okay, so again, this is some Git stuff and this is getting a little little comp complicated, I know, uh, but it is important that you just kind of practice it and just not worry too much because this whole video you could do all over again. All right, so if I list everything out and I go into LWC settings, list everything out there, I now see that, hey, look, my local file is gone. So CD back, this is what I wanna see. And CD back one more time. Now I'm gonna do python manage.py sync db. Okay, so now it says it cannot import the LWC settings file. So no module name product. All right, so we have an issue with our settings file. So in it, so it's from base, that's fine. Ah, it's right here. So product is not right. So it's production, okay. so. This is where you would have known. Okay, can't import settings, no module name product. Now, I just first right off the bat guessed because it happened right after I ran SyncDB, I just guessed it had something to do with one of my settings files. I was lucky that it was the init, but it definitely could have been production uh, and it could have been base as well. Uh, so something I also noticed is the local.py file is now gone um, completely from our project. So let's see if how much that affects everything. So I'm gonna actually go to exit, python manage.py, run server, go into our app here, still working fine. And that's because base and local were the same file. Uh, but I did wanna show you that in it, you could still, uh, still do this stuff, right? Um, and it'd still work where if I added a local file and I wanted to make any changes, this is how you would do it. But since we, don't have a local file 
uh, when it actually goes live, uh, this is what's gonna happen. So I still wanna add a local file. So local.py and I'm gonna just copy base, paste it in there. Okay, so now if I do get status again, uh, we see that the init changed and that's it. Uh, that's only because I deleted some stuff and I changed production. All right, so git add, git commit, update settings, git push Heroku master. Okay, so just keep in mind that's the process. If you ever need to change anything, that's what you'll do. Okay, I'll come back when that's finished. Okay, so it finished and then I see that, hey, look, I got this error. I have an error there, so we'll see what that error is uh, in just a second. So I'm gonna do, first I'm gonna do Heroku run python manage.py sync db. Let's see if that works. So the one we did originally actually didn't work because it was our local.py file was actually in there. Ah, and here's the problem. So it's in production.py. I spelled import incorrectly. So production. This happens, it happens to everyone. So just keep that in mind. And it does tell you, luckily it does tell you where the error happened, right? So now again, git add, git commit message, updated production file settings, git push Heroku master. And once again, we'll be right back. Okay, now we don't have any errors running, which is good. So Python, or now we do Heroku run, python manage.py, sync db. Because all we're really doing here is adding our Heroku app to a Heroku database. So it looks like we're okay here. So let's set a super user. Okay, Heroku run, python manage.py, migrate. All right, so it looks like it started those fields. So I'll do Heroku open. So it's opening my subdomain. All right, so notice that the file, the image itself is pretty big. So that's why it's taking a while to load. Um, and if I do coding for entrepreneurs and hit join, ah, it works. Cool. So we have our percentage, we have everything in here that's working correctly. Uh, if I go into admin, um, my username, log in, save your password, uh, and we see our joins are now working. Great, so if I go to a page that does not exist, I see our new 404 page, which is perfect. That's what we wanted to see. Um, and yeah, so now it's actually working pretty well. So there's one more thing that I wanna do is I wanna change this to being false. And I'm going to go into um, our share page and make some changes to that. So go into share and our actual link so a reference url is not correct right so we actually need to change our reference url so let's go to the view that's handling it shares views and our reference url is here so it's in settings.share url uh, i'm just tracing back uh, if you remembered exactly where that was that's great i didn't so in production i'm just going to say production share url equals to uh, and then I'm gonna use our Heroku app here. And I just wanna make sure that this is the right format. So let's actually look into our base file and see what our share URL looks like. And it looks like it has ref at the end of it, which I did not have on the other one. So production, let's add ref to it. There we go. So now we have our share app. Um, all right, so that's good. So let's add it in, so git add git commit, update ref URL, ref slash share URL, git push Heroku master. Okay, so I'm gonna let that do that. 
Um, and then let's see, what else do we need to do still? Uh, we do need to point our domain name. So let's go into Heroku and go to domain name. You could also just do a Google search for Heroku domain name. Press enter. And you see custom domain name should be the first thing. So if we scroll down a little bit, um, there's this is the command that we'll be end up using. Uh, but something that I want you to note is these, um, the domain name, so the target, how this is actually going to work. Um, so we use a C name and we set it to our, our actual account like this, right? Um, so for us to do this, we have to own our own domain name. So like www.example.com. Or in our case, for now, it's going to be launchwithcode.com, right? So that's the domain name that we're going to be working with for us. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it. And again, we want to we want to change our C names, C name records. And um, you can buy your domain name anywhere. I prefer name.com. I really like their service. They don't spam me all the time. They don't hit me up for a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, and then you're going to go into DNS records and C name, and you can do www. And then the answer is going to be our app here without the www or the HTTP. So you, it, if you copy it and paste it, it's just going to bring that in. So again, looking at how they have it, they just have it like that, right? So that's how we'll do it and get rid of that trailing slash two. Just go to add record. All right, cool. So then now we can copy this and do it again. And I can have C name. I can put star stars for wildcard domain. So actually any domain on launchwithcode.com will do that or any subdomain that is like www and ABC and all these things. We can go add record and then C name. You can also just leave it blank and add record. There we go. So now we have, oops, I want to edit these because they don't have com at the end of it. So dot com update. You don't have to worry about TTL. You can leave that as a default com. Okay. So that's all you have to do as far as your settings are concerned. Um, and now I can, this is of course, assuming that the place you bought your domain name is also the place where you manage it. So if you just bought a domain name, this works out well. Uh, if your name servers don't look like this, just change your name servers to the default ones, unless you know what you're doing. If you know what you're doing, this should be review anyway. Um, and then change your C names to work like that. Okay. So now if we look in Heroku, that should be done and it is. The only thing that we need to do now is Heroku domains add and ours for me it's www.launchwithcode.com and let's make sure there's not a space in between add i have a space that i just wrote so i'm going to add this domain all right so now it's adding and it just added it okay and then i'm going to add star so the wildcard domain or any domain name and then i'm just going to add launch with code there we go. And then let's actually check out host launch with code.com. And it says Heroku. Perfect. So that's exactly what we want. So now let's go ahead and check out launch with code.com. And voila. Quickly check our code here and do coding for entrepreneurs at Gmail. Hit join. Ah, it has our Heroku app. Well, that's actually what we put. So let's change it now to launch with code. And we will go into our production and go into the static URL or the share URL. Change that to being launchwithcode.com. All right. And then do our git add, git commit, update share. URL, git push, Heroku master. Okay, so while it's doing that, let's actually check our reference ID that that actually works. And I'll just do coding for entrepreneurs two at Gmail, hit join. Okay, no friends joined, let's go back. Coding for entrepreneurs, let's see if one friend has joined. The number is one, yay. Okay, cool, so it, it does work. So the actual sharing part works. Um, so that's it, uh, we've got it. Now all we have to do is actually check to make sure that our URL is coming through correctly. All right, so now on launch with code, go to Coding for Entrepreneurs, 
Okay, cool. So now it's the right URL. Copy that. Paste it in. Looks like it's working. Ref. Okay, great. And now I'll just do abc at gmail.com. Hit join. Looks like we're in business. Let's go back to our other one. Hit refresh in here. Scroll down. The number is two. Great. We are getting, I mean, that's it. That's what we've got. So now that we have that, I mean, there's really not a whole lot other than that we would need to do. Other than if you wanted to prevent certain IP addresses from not working. Um, and also you would maybe want to check to see if the IP addresses are working. Oops, we need to make that trailing slash come there. And notice it's still on launch with code. You go to joins, you see our, our joins there, and then the IP address should also be there. So if I click on it, my IP address is blocked just so you know I don't have things happen to my computer. Um, but yeah, it is working. Uh, it actually is showing an IP address um, and it is correct. And you would be able to check this on your own. Um, so go ahead and do that. Congratulations, you are now ready to launch with code. We've officially done it and hopefully it was fairly straightforward for you and you're able to overcome some of the issues by either checking my code or talking to us on YouTube or, or on Coding for Entrepreneurs or anywhere like that. Um, now I hope you actually do something with this. The point of, of actually launching this project or doing this project in the first place is so you can go out there and make your project happen, whatever it is. Now, if you this was a struggle for you technically, maybe you don't want to learn more as far as code goes. But using this, you'd be able to actually prove to some sort of developer out there that, hey, this project has legs. We have, you know, however many people signed up for it and we've got all this demand. So now we need to just fill that demand and make something happen and bring it even further. I think Launch With Code is a great way to allow you to do that. Um, of course, if you do want to get deeper and you want to learn more, then I highly suggest that you ch check out codingforentrepreneurs.com. Um, this is our project-based programming class home. So everything that we do is on codingforentrepreneurs.com and it is available for all members. There's reference code for some of the projects that aren't on GitHub. Um, and then we also go into other projects more like different topics and different types of projects. Um, and we get into a little bit things like social authentic authentication, creating your own API, uh, more stuff on Heroku and Django, um, using Amazon Web Services to use your um, all your different files and stuff like that. And then um, for anybody, member or not, you can suggest a project and um, all you'd have to do is in, like actually sign up for a free account to suggest a project. And from here, this is how we know what projects to make next. Uh, and we do that quite a bit. Um, so if you have any questions, let me know. Um, I would love it if you subscribe to our YouTube channel or shared with your friends. That would be awesome as well. Um, the more subscribers we have, the more videos we end up making. And that's the same with whether they're enrolled at codingforentrepreneurs.com or they're subscribers on YouTube. Um, so, and we are always looking for suggestions and improvements. So if you find any little thing that would make our series better, let us know. Um, again, thank you so much. And I hope to see you again. Cheers.